Now we stand at a most dangerous hour waiting for the next page to turn. And this could very quickly, very quickly become a wider regional yes. war with the Sunni powers, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Israel fighting Hezbollah uh, across the border in Lebanon. So, so we stand at the most dangerous moment in the Middle East that we have lived through in our lifetimes, and there's been plenty of dangerous moments. Well, one thing I would say to that, um, and, and there are war powers resolutions that are being introduced. Uh, I, I spoke to several members of, of Congress yesterday in the Senate, Tim Kaine and Robert Menendez, about that. Uh, the president of the United States is commander in chief of the American Armed Forces, as stated in the Constitution. Um, we also have the power to make war given to Congress. It has been essentially eviscerated over 35 years. But I just think it's important that there's some Democratic say here about what happens next. Um, the country is bigger than the president. War making is vested in the United States Congress, even though that's been essentially abdicated of by course. that same Congress. And uh, there should be domestic political debate <laughs> about what happens next, because in the absence of that, we are headed towards precisely the kinds of regional conflagration you just described. I made, the, I made the point earlier today that when you think about the wars that began on 9-11, uh, it is almost certain before this next presidential election that we will see the first soldier, sailor, airman, or marine killed in action somewhere in the Middle East who was born after those attacks took place. And it's extraordinary. And when you consider almost 20 years of war, it has a pernicious effect on democracy, on democracies. Yes. Democracies are not rigged yes. to exist in a state of perpetual war. Iran has the 14th most powerful military ranked in that assessment. Uh, in the world, this is not the Iraqi military. Uh, it is not comparable and it is not able to stand toe to toe with the American military. However, it does have the ability uh, to deliver lethal blows. And we stand right now tonight with a president who we have seen over these last years polarize the country, divide the country. When war comes, it's not the MAGA rally that goes to war. It's not the Republican Party that goes to war. It's the United States of America that goes to war. The assessments about the justification for the killing that there was imminence to an attack, I think, are not credible. Nope. The president has lied many, many thousands of times to the American people. So structurally, you can't imagine, yes. I think, a worse president, a worse possible leader to stand at the head of America's armed forces at this very dangerous moment. And we should say that there are thousands who are already being deployed in the wake of that uh, strike to Qasem Soleimani. There are thousands in Iraq. There are thousands of Iraqi service members. And there are, of course, and I think just important to keep thinking about this, there are millions of civilians in Iraq and Iran and throughout the region who have done nothing wrong and whose lives will be upended and destroyed and will probably lose lives uh, should there be a war and have already seen way more war than anyone anyone ought to in a lifetime. Steve Schmidt, thank you very much. Thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.